अब साइंस स्टैंड अप सिट डाउन बोलना पड़ेगा। The bulk of this manifesto, which is there in part two, presents the alternative policies that the CPIM proposes and stands for. In this 16th Lok Sabha election, in the few days since the announcement of the election, it has become clear that the elections are sought to be projected as a battle between certain leaders and personalities and diverted from and devoid of the major issues and policies which should be of concern to the people who are going to elect a new Lok Sabha and a new government. We have made out a case in this manifesto that after the record of misrule of the Congress-led UPA government in which the striking failures of this government have been the failure to curb price rise which is relentless, the failure to generate employment even though they claim high growth, <coughs> the unprecedented record of corruption and <coughs> mega scams under this regime and the failure to deliver in improving the lives of different sections of the people. What we need is, of course, the rejection of the Congress and the UPA and the ouster of the UPA government. But along with that, what is required is an alternative trajectory of growth and alternative policies. The BJP has not got any different set of policies to that of the UPA government. In all the major political and policy issues which confront the country, the BJP is not only not an alternative, but it is a retrograde and reactionary alternative that it presents. Take the case of corruption itself. Here is a party which has created a record in corruption when it ran the state government in Karnataka. Its then chief minister was arrested on corruption charges. Today, of course, he is back in the BJP and is going to contest for the Lok Sabha elections. But on all the major range of issues, you will see on economic policies, on the question of tackling price rise, the BJP has nothing new or nothing different to offer. As you all know, it was the CPIM and the left which had consistently opposed the deregulation of petroleum prices, demanded the reduction of central excise duties and customs duties on petroleum products and a restructuring of the whole pricing of petroleum products. The BJP, when it was in government, the NDA government, did precisely what the UPA government was doing. It was also for deregulation. 
significantly the BJP has not opposed the doubling of the prices of natural gas, which we had opposed not only now but earlier when they revised the price of natural gas, the whole KG Godavari Basin gas pricing issue. When it was increased to four dollars, at that time itself we had opposed it. But the BJP does not say this increase is bad. <coughs> you will find that on the question of resource mobilization, of plugging the loopholes, black money and, and retrieval of money gone abroad, we are saying stop the Mauritius route. Now this is a Mauritius route which was pioneered during the NDA government, which has been vigorously pursued by the UPA government, the same policy. So I'm not going into the details. Basically, what we are arguing is that what the country needs is an alternative based on alternative policies. And it is in that context that we would like you to read and study the proposals we have made in part two. A gist of some of the major proposals have been given to you, circulated to you. Food security law, for instance, which is claimed to be one of the major achievements of the UPA government. <coughs> As you know, we had criticized and not accepted this as a adequate food security law, <coughs> the law that is passed in Parliament. We still demand a new law <coughs> which will be based on universal public distribution system. The present law still targets, is a targeted system. We say every family should get 35 kgs of food grains or per capita 7 kg at not more than 2 rupees and this should be available to all except a small category those who can be excluded who are in the well off category we would still want that bill to be brought a new block for price rise <coughs> we would take just 2-3 major steps one is, as I said, bring back administered price control of petroleum products and reduce the taxes on petrol. This itself will bring down the cost of fuel and transportation and bring down inflation in the economy. And we will not allow futures trading in essential commodities and food grains. We had argued for this ban prohibition even in the days of the UPA one government. And you will see that we have in all the various areas and spheres set out an agenda which will strengthen the democratic system, secularism and federalism. On centre-state relations, a demand which I think finds universal support from all state governments, which is devolution of 50% of the total collection of central taxes to the states and transferring of centrally sponsored schemes under the state subjects with funds to the center. Like that we have set out, for example, on the land issue, which has become a very key and major question in our country. It's not only a question of stopping forcible land acquisition and providing for a fair deal, compensation and rehabilitation for land when it is taken with the consent of the 
landowners and others dependent on land. This country has forgotten the agenda of land reforms. Land reform laws are being reversed or diluted. And homesteads for both urban and rural landless house sites for both urban and rural poor has become a priority. So there are a number of land issues on which we would like to bring in new initiatives and policies. As far as foreign policy is concerned, you all know our party has been opposing the departure from uh, independent and non-aligned foreign policy. You know the history of the UPA 1 government. And today also it has become more important to stress the need for an independent foreign policy based on a non-aligned approach. You have Forums now, like BRICS and IPSA, which need to be strengthened. So that cooperation between the major developing countries and South-South cooperation takes place. And the second track is, unlike the Bharatiya Janata Party, which would like to spoil relations with all our neighbours, if you read the spe hear the speeches of Narendra Modi, whether it's Bangladesh, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's China, whether it is Nepal, everybody is attacked. We argue for improving relations, settling issues which exist between these countries, whether it's Bangladesh, whether it is Pakistan, whether it's Nepal, especially our South Asian neighbours with whom we should develop very close ties of cooperation and friendship. Our party has consistently stood for one-third reservation for women in the parliament and state legislatures. As you know, it was passed in the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha. Raj Sabha, but it was not passed in the Lok Sabha. So this becomes a priority for the new Lok Sabha when it is uh, constituted. In the case of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, apart from other issues, what we want is a central legislation which will ensure that the special component plan for SCs and the tribal sub plan are given a legal footing. So that plan outlays are made proportionate to the proportion of the population of SC and ST in the country as a whole and in the states. A legislation like this has already been passed in Andhra Pradesh after a long struggle and we want that to be brought into the central legislation. And as far as the Adivasis are concerned today, not only is the question of the Forest Rights Act to be implemented fully, but also the alienation of Adivasis from their land and traditional habitats. We want that to be stopped and land illegally alienated from them restored to the tribal people. As far as minorities are concerned, two important issues are there. We had demanded after the Sacha report that a sub-plan for the minorities should also be there, just like the sub-plan for the tribal people. That is allocation of funds dedicated for the development and welfare of minorities in the various parts of the country. It was rejected. But we still believe that this is one of the better ways to ensure that the minorities get equal access to development and socio-economic uh, progress. The second is, 
the Ranganath Commission, Mishra Commission, that is the commission which is there, a permanent commission, in its first set of recommendations had argued for reservation for the minorities based on social and economic backwardness. This government has not implemented the major recommendation. What it tried to do was to say we will give 4.5% re reservation within the OPC 27% reservation, which is not at all adequate or in the spirit of the Ranganath Commission, uh, Mishra Commission recommendation. We would like that to be uh, implemented. In both education and health, it is the woeful lack of funds, public funding of health and education, public expenditure on health and education. 6% of the GDP for education was promised, is never seen the light of day. And we say 5% should be of the GDP, public expenditure on health. These are two major areas which are today subject to outright privatization where common citizens are deprived of the right to education and health. So these are two major policy steps that need to be taken. And as far as wages and pensions are concerned, you are aware all the national trade unions have jointly been struggling for a statutory minimum wage of rupees 10,000 per month and which is indexed to the cost of living, consumer price index. This should become a national norm which will be of course periodically revised as per the consumer price index. The second is a national pension policy. Number of proposals have come in the recent period but we think that at present, 4,000 rupees or the 50% of the minimum wage at that time, whichever is higher, should be the minimum pension which should be available to every citizen of India who is entitled to get pension. I won't go into other details, there are so many other issues. For the youth of our country, we have first of all asked for the right to work to be made a fundamental right in the constitution. Secondly, according to the government itself, 6 lakh posts are vacant in the government at all levels. You help, you fill up these vacancies and you'll immediately see that a large number of the young people who are unemployed today will get some access to jobs. So these are the two steps which should be taken immediately. And as far as fighting corruption is concerned, it's good that a Lokpal Act was finally enacted. But we had said at that time that this bill, Lokpal bill is not adequate because it does not cover a whole area of the corporate sector which has dealings with the government, PPP projects and so on. All this must be brought under the purview of the Lokpal. As you have seen, most of the major corruption scandals have involved corporates dealing with government. What is the 2G spectrum? So, all that should be brought fully within the purview of the Lokpa. So, we would like that dimension to be added and strengthen, and strengthen the Lokpa through that. In the case of fighting communalism, we had always wanted a law against communal violence and for rehabilitation and compensation for the victims of communal violence. This has not happened because the law has to keep in mind that federal structure is not infringed. The powers of the states 
regarding law and order cannot be violated. So we should make a law which will deal with that, but a law to counter communal violence and rehabilitation and compensation for victims of communal violence is required. And finally, I would like to draw your attention to three or four major constitutional and legislative reforms that we have advocated. The first is, Article 3 of the Constitution needs to be amended. So that in the case of a division of a state or a reorganization of a state, which powers of it lies with parliament today, we are saying the consent of the state legislature concerned or the states concerned have to be taken. You cannot divide states in a federal setup without the approval or the concurrence of the state legislature. We have seen the experience of the division of Andhra Pradesh. In future, let the state legislature agree, then you can go forward to parliament can go forward towards bifurcation. We need that sort of amendment to the constitution. The second amendment to the constitution which we are asking for is that all international agreements and treaties should have the approval of parliament. Today your government, which can be a minority government because in our system now we have coalition governments which are minority governments also, surviving on support from parties outside, can sign away various sovereign rights of the country through international treaties and parliament has no say in the matter. So that is why we want an amendment to make it clear that any international agreement or treaty requires the approval, ex explicit sanction and approval of parliament. As far as the Armed Forces Special Powers Act is concerned, we have had enough discussion on this matter and we would like the repeal of this act and replacement of that with a suitable law which will enable the armed forces to work, operate within that framework, legal framework. As far as the abolition of the death penalty is concerned, our party is the first national party to advocate the abolition of the death penalty and removal of it from the statutes. We think that is a step we should go towards and we will work towards that in the new parliament. As far as article uh, section 377 of the Indian Penal Code is concerned, we are for decriminalization uh, of uh, consensual relationships, same-sex relationships. We have always stood for that and we hope that Parliament will legislate so that uh, decriminalization of such relations take place. So these are some of the points. There are many other issues uh, in the manifesto which uh, I'm sure you can read and then uh, report upon. Yes. See, which left party is, you may have, there is no left party in uh, with Jayalalitha today. You are talking about a party which has, which there are three or four groups of the forward bloc in Tamil Nadu. So that's not the issue. The issue is the left parties are unitedly working and in these elections you will find when the final list of candidates of the left are released that we will be fighting the maximum number of seats in the history of uh, the left parties in parliament and we will be fighting them united. So now the left parties we are talking about that because is RSP a part of the left parties? Of course. Well, but, but just because one state unit defects, that RSP does not cease to exist. And you are from Kerala, you should know the history of the RSP defecting earlier also. So now the left parties we are talking about that because is 
RSP a part of the left party? Of course. Well, but, but just because one state unit defects, that RSP does not cease to exist. And you are from Kerala, you should know the history of the RSP defecting earlier also. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Mr. Kara, at one side there is UPA, on the other hand we have BJP and the NDA alliance. So where do you find yourself? Do you find what is the position of this third alternative or the left in this political scenario, especially after that platform you created for the third alternative forces almost crumbled? Opposed to both. Well, I don't understand uh, how you Opposed say it crumbled. Because when we met on the 25th of February, Nine political parties were there, two did not attend, but they also have taken a position that they are fighting both Congress and BJP. What we said is, we are going to be together. We are both, we are interested in fighting Congress and BJP and we hope to provide an alternative, the concrete shape of which will take place after the election. When we had a discussion among all these parties, it was clear to us that we will work to maximize our strength and performance of these parties in their respective states and regions. And we will pool our resources and strength after the elections. So that is going to happen after the election. नहीं नहीं टारगेट कोई नहीं है लेकिन हमारी पार्टी की ओर से हम कह सकते हैं कि सबसे ज्यादा सीटें हम इस बार लड़ेंगे और कम सौ के करीब सीटों को लड़ने वाले हैं हम लड़ रहे हैं जीतने के लिए कितने जीतने के one unit of the RSP in one state has defected, that's all. <coughs> well, you ask them how many states they exist. <laughs> Why they exist in other states? Bihar they exist, Orissa they exist. They are putting up candidates for your information. I am telling you my party's understanding of what happened in Kerala. That's all. We have already said it publicly, the LDF has said it publicly, and the RSP, All India, has not <coughs> recognized these people anymore as <coughs> RSP. Do you think that the non congress non BJP? Uh, after this, this is the first person, after your you know, so-called coming out of this, do you please tell us which all parties uh, do you have arrangements or seat arrangements or any possible understanding for the public action? As I said, this so-called what you said, because it's so-called, because we never called ourselves a third front for your information. We said we are coming together. And if you will recall, I have explained before this meeting that this is not predicated on any electoral alliances or tie-ups between the constituents of these parties. As far as my party is concerned, we were only looking for an electoral tie-up or understanding in Tamil Nadu with the All India Anna DM. That has not happened. But we were clear from the outset that this is not the base on which we are going to cooperate. The left party is cooperating with Samajwadi party or with BJD or Janta Dal S or the other parties is not predicated on our having an electoral understanding necessarily with these parties. Do you think that the non-Congress, non-BJP front would have been more coherent if you had agreed on a prime ministerial candidate who would be in the face of your party? In principle, we are against having a prime ministerial candidate because we believe, and I explained this at that time, we are parties based on a federal principle that we represent parties representing different regional parties and state-based parties. Now, it will be wrong for us to project one leader as a prime minister after the elections when we will sit together if the question arises or the need arises, we will decide upon a prime ministerial candidate or nominee. This happened earlier in 1996, as you know, and it happened earlier in 1989 also. 
when a non-Congress Prime Ministerial candidate had to be decided. Anybody who knows our party, our party is aware of our party, they know that our seats are the most important from Bengal, Kerala and Thrupura. So, the most important from these three regions is our hope and our hope. The rest of the other regions can be able to get seats, but the most important seats are the most important from these three regions. Again, we are not leading the campaign business. For Lok Sabha, they are not leading. They are not them are fighting the election. Is this <laughs> party for our party? Is there any of you in the We had to say that all parties have to इलाकों में क्षेत्रों में सबसे ज्यादा ध्यान देके जोर देके काम करना पड़ेगा तो उसमें अभी आपसी सहयोग इतना तो हो सकता है कुछ जगहों में हमारे उनके उम्मीदवारों को हम समर्थन कर सकते हैं यस वी हैव हैड this tradition in Kerala, I think you are referring to Kerala, of putting up candidates supported by the left. Every election, we have put up candidates supported by the left. Generally, they are left inclined or they are genuinely independent, but they are prepared to come onto a left platform. So this is this will help the left to gather wider support, and we have had members of parliament and also members of the Legislative Assembly who have been independents, who have been supported by the CPIM and the left. This has always happened. Even in 2004, you will know in Kerala, the MP from Ernagulam was an independent supported by the left. No, joint campaign will be there in the sense in some states where we exist, where we are not fighting seats, we will extend support to the parties which we want to cooperate with. If federal front is not a vehicle, it is not a vehicle. If it is not a vehicle, it is not a vehicle. अभी तक हमारे अंदाजे में अभी तो 100 सीट तय नहीं हुआ है, करीब 90 सीट तय हुआ है, अभी तक 12-13 परसेंट है महिलाओं के। I think one month ago we have already announced Varanasi. We already have a candidate in Varanasi. I say we have a candidate there. I don't know whether you know, Banaras is a seat we have been fighting always. Except for once or twice, we have always fought in Banaras. Though whatever our strength, we have always had a seat. Varanasi seat we have always fought. We fought in 2004. I don't think we fought in 2009. But we are fighting this time. We have already announced. What's your, what's your level of expectation in West Bengal? Huh? What's your level of expectation in West Bengal? The campaign has started. We will wait and see. We are, we are fighting all seats. We are fighting all to win. We fight to win. We fight to win. We don't, we don't have the fight to lose. दो बार हम कैंपेन के लिए हम आप टिके रहे हैं बारानसी में 91 और 96 में।